His family abandoned him. A doctor adopted him. What he did then is hard to believe. When this photo went viral, this man was abused by many words about his family, and his close circle abandoned him. How begins when a gorgeous man had a large portion of his face pulverized by a melon-measured dangerous tumor? A specialist has now completed reconstructive surgery all over with skin taken from his thighs. And though his face is not back to normal, it is now more adequate and less demanding to take a gander at. A man who is left with half a face after it was ravaged by cancer has had it rebuilt by a genius surgeon. Tim McGrath, 38, was diagnosed with a synovial sarcoma, an extremely rare form of soft tissue cancer, leaving him with a grape-sized tumor growing on his face. Medics managed to cut out the cancer's tumor, but his body rejected multiple attempts to rebuild it. But after a year of living with exposed flesh, top surgeon Dr. Congruent Closet heard about Mr. McGrath's plight and agreed to help him using skin from his leg and forearm to reconstruct his face. Mr. McGrath from Michigan is now enjoying every opportunity he has been given, and the reconstruction work on his face will continue in 2018. He said, After the operation to remove the tumor, I was heartbroken. I didn't realize that half of my face would be taken away, and it wasn't until I went to Dr. Che Estate that I started to feel real hope again. I was covered in scars from previous surgeries, which limited my options for reconstruction, but we went ahead and the outcome has been incredible. He reconstructed my face using skin and muscle from my leg and left forearm, and a flap from my forehead, and skin grafts were used to help the healing process. I currently can't drink liquid, eat through my mouth, or pronounce certain words. However, my quality of life has improved massively. There are people who stare at me, mostly children who don't understand, but I would hope that others look past what they can see. My journey has been long and mostly inconceivable to most, but I have an amazing support group around me, and I draw strength from them daily. I've been through something horrific, but if what I've gone through can inspire people to live their lives with gratitude for things they take for granted, then it makes what I've gone through all worth the while. Mr. McGrath was first diagnosed with synovial sarcoma in February 2014 after complaining of severe jaw pain. An MRI revealed an egg-sized tumor. However, Mr. McGrath turned down surgery and spent the following 18 months seeking non-surgical alternatives. Unfortunately, synovial sarcoma is resistant to many things, including chemotherapy, and the tumor continues to grow. He added, at the end of May 2015, the tumor doubled in size, and I had to have a tracheotomy fitted to be able to breathe and a feeding tube so I could eat because the tumor had invaded the space in my mouth. Heavy doses of radiation caused the tumor to start dying and shrink, and parts started to fall off. Eventually, I got my mouth back and I could eat very thin pieces of food. After the tumor shrank and the radiation treatment was over, I had to wait a few weeks before they could remove the remaining mass. In October 2015, Mr. McGrath was admitted to the hospital where he remained for almost seven weeks, following the initial 30-hour operation to remove and then reconstruct his face. Mr. McGrath said, Before the surgery, they gave me the worst-case scenario. They said I would have to lose my left eye and my left ear, but I didn't believe that was going to be necessary. When I woke up, I was in complete shock. As well as removing part of my face and bone structure, they had removed most of the muscle on my back. They had taken a rib, and they took part of my scapula and part of my shoulder, too. This was so they could rebuild my bone structure and the surrounding area. However, my body rejected the first attempts. Eventually, I was discharged, and the cavity was closed over, but over time, the transplant kept shrinking, and I experienced numerous infections. There were so many times when I wanted to give up, and at times, it was difficult to find the strength to carry on. During his long journey towards recovery, Mr. McGrath made the bold decision to leave his original surgeon and was welcomed with open arms by Dr. Chizate, who he heard about through a friend in April 2016. He added, I'm fortunate enough that he practices within 12 miles of my parents' house. Dr. C is a humanitarian who dedicates his life towards giving and helping others. He's humble and has an amazing sense of humor. I consider him a great friend. He's given me so much hope. 
I've had over 20 surgeries to date, and five of those have been with Dr. C, none of which have been rejected. Dr. C now wants me to have a year off to relax and gain my strength back, let the swelling go down, and just have fun in life. I'm definitely taking advantage of every opportunity I have to live. Dr. C will continue with the reconstruction of Mr. McGrath's face next winter, which will further help his speech and will give him the ability to eat and drink again. Mr. McGrath said, My family and friends have been amazing, and their fundraisers have helped me afford and endure the forty dollars to $50,000 that has had to come out of pocket. I've been incredibly lucky to have insurance. The first eight weeks in the hospital rang up a bill of $1.2 million alone. I now have found the confidence to share my story, and if my journey can lead to a happy life for others, and I truly understand why I was chosen to walk this path. Sarcomas are a group of rare cancers affecting the tissues that connect, support, and surround other body structures and organs. Tissues that can be affected by sarcomas include fat, muscle, blood vessels, deep skin tissues, tendons, and ligaments. Sarcomas can develop in almost any part of the body, including the legs, arms, and the trunk or torso. They account for around one in every 100 cancers diagnosed in the UK. More than 3,000 new cases are diagnosed every year. There are often no obvious symptoms in the early stages, although sufferers may notice a soft, painless lump under the skin, or deeper that can't easily be moved around and it gets bigger over time. People should see their GP if they have any worrying lump or any other troublesome symptoms. A lump the size of a golf ball or larger should be regarded as suspicious and needs to be investigated urgently. Dr. C acknowledges that I have been through an amazing amount of stress on my body and he wants everything to rest and heal over the next year, explains McGrath. He wants me to go out and have fun and enjoy my life. He's now focused on regaining the ability to eat through his mouth as well as speak more clearly and drink liquids. McGrath says that his family has been his champions, adding that his mom became my at-home nurse for wound changes, IVs, feedings, and so much more, while his father has stood by my side from the very start. We were a close family before, but have grown closer because of this journey, he notes, adding praise for his three siblings and friends. Those friends continue to amaze me with their support, through fundraisers and websites and always reaching out to me. Wanting to share his journey has taken time, McGrath admits. I didn't want to be reminded of all the things I had to endure, he says, adding that now he is focused on the way his ordeal has changed his perspective. Going through this has taught me that I'm so much more than just my exterior, says McGrath. I hope my story can inspire people to be grateful every day that they're healthy and they can enjoy the simple pleasures in life. He adds, I'm not someone that enjoys the spotlight, but I knew that my story needed to be shared. Knowing that my story may change lives, save lives, and inspire love makes everything I've gone through worth it. As it's called, it has slashed the species population from 140,000 animals to around 20,000. It is easily spread because the feisty animals often nip each other during breeding season or while scraping over the carcasses, their main source of food. Small lesions or lumps in and around the mouth quickly develop into large tumors on the face and neck and sometimes other parts of the body. The tumors interfere with feeding and the affected animal may starve to death. Once the cancer becomes visible, it is almost always fatal. Tumors are either benign or malignant. Benign facial tumors can grow larger, but most are not particularly life-threatening or dangerous. Malignant growths, however, are cancerous and can metastasize or spread to other parts of the body. The theory that cancer cells themselves could be an infective agent, the allograft theory, 49, was first offered in 2006 by Perce Swift and colleagues. They analyzed cells from devils in several locations, determining that all DFTD cells sampled were genetically identical to each other and genetically distinct from their hosts and from all other individual Tasmanian devils whose genetics had been studied. This allowed them to conclude that the cancer originated from a single individual and spread from it, rather than arising repeatedly and independently. 
2021. Different subtypes have been identified by analyzing the mitochondrial and nuclear genomes of 104 tumors from different Tasmanian devils. Researchers have also witnessed a previously uninfected devil develop tumors from lesions caused by an infected devil's bites, supporting the contention that the disease is spread by allograft with transmission via biting and scratching. During biting, infection can spread from the bitten devil to the biter. Initially, it was suspected that devils had low genetic diversity. However, it was later demonstrated that devils are sufficiently genetically diverse to mount a strong immune response to foreign tissue.